Hi, I'm your host Travis Prince and this is Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. We are live right now at AFA's 2019 December's Member Show and I'm speaking with one of my favorite artists, Ted Scazzafabo. How's it going, man? Good, thank you. That's very kind of you. Thanks. <laughs> um, so this Member Show uh, is, is really big and we have a lot of different artists in here. Uh, how many times have you presented art in a Member Show here at AFA? This is my first time. I just joined uh, AFA this year after after my show. Um, it's it's a great place. It really fosters a lot of um, artists and, and creativity here, and, and it's really inspiring just to be in this building. So it's my first of many. So hopefully, I do this maybe you know every time they have it. Yeah. So uh, AFA has a member show uh, twice a year. We, uh, they do one in the summertime in June, and one that carries from December to January. And so this is some of your latest art here? Yes, this is new. I, I made it purposely for this. This is the first time showing it. Um, I make sure I want to get it done for this. So it's kind of inspiration to get the stuff out for these shows and stuff. So yeah, this is brand new. Well, I, I really like it. Uh, like we talked before, dude, I really love your style where you use the digital effects, but it still looks incredibly a lot like a painting. Um, the geometric shapes you use in your art is, is very has this very stark contrast to the way you make the colors flow like paint. It's, it's really intriguing. I really enjoy your stuff, dude. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's, it's really intentional. The geometric seems to be a pattern in my stuff that kind of comes out. I think it's just something that's in me and I don't know why. And so this is almost a direct play of that. And it's something I think people maybe see with abstract expressionism, if you call it this. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this, even though it just look random shape. There's a lot of meaning in this, so uh, er, for me, so everything's there for a reason for this. So uh, I'm glad people appreciate it for what it is. But there's for everything is there. It's for a reason, you know. Well, that's that's the main thing I want to get to about this piece. Um, I love the colors, the the contrast with the the deep greens and the yellows and oranges. But the title alone is very very striking. It's called Prelude. The Making of a Loser. Mm -hmm. So can you explain that to us? Yeah, um, so there's a lot in the title. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, maybe, uh, I actually took this photo in the back of the wires. I'm, when I did this, I was actually on my back underneath my car, fixing my car, essentially gluing my muffler on my car. <laughs> it's an old car, but it, it does, you know, it gets me an A to B. And, and uh, you know, so you get a little self-conscious about your car and, and your spot where you are in life and stuff like that most in your head. And so, yeah, it, it's kind of like that. And all that is the general theme of that, where it comes from. Um, so, yeah, to me, to me, the, the, the lines intersection, that's visually striking to me. But then after that, it, it's, it's really, you know, things coming apart. Um, a lot of stuff in my, in my paintings has a lot of square items um, a lot of stuff I've been inspired by Mark Rothko and and the square thing kind of developed from that even though it's kind of not directly related so here the squares falling apart now there's a circle the circles falling apart uh, there's and the paints still there though because I love paint without this stuff you know paint gives us that soul um, so there's that in it uh, and even I put paint on top of this, even though it's just a little thing, they're still there. It's blocking out. Something's not there. It's masking over, you know? So there's all that in there. So, um, yeah, so making of a loser, it's kind of what's going on underneath the stepping points of that terrible feeling. You don't think you're ever going to hit. And then there you are. You find yourself laying on the the road fixing your muffler and <laughs> you don't know what happened <laughs> I, I really like your work man it's uh it's 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 very intricate it's it's deep in meaning it's uh vibrant and full of colors oh, uh, and interrupted that cobalt turquoise is the call <laughs> if you're crazy yeah that's my new obsession yeah I'm a, I'm a big cobalt blue fan, yeah. and so I love those cobalt yeah. colors as well. That new teal, it's like my new obsession. It's just where I'm at right now. So It's, it's a gorgeous color. Um, also, you've been an inspiration for me. Uh, I'm a portrait artist, and I don't do a lot of geometric shapes, but lately I have been trying to uh, implement 
shapes and, uh, and different lines and, and geometric aspects into my art, and I, I would have to contribute that to you. Wow, that's a big honor. I, I, I have noticed that, and it's really fascinating because it's, it's almost like I see that, and that's almost inspiring to me because that stuff is, is just very um, interesting. This whole sacred geometry, there's a whole nother world. People just see lines, but there's just lines alone could mean infinite things, you know what I mean? Just like math is just infinite, like pi. Yeah. They, okay, I'm not gonna go off on that right now, but yeah, there's lots. There's so, lots I'm happy that you, uh, you're in the member show, you're, you're a member of AFA, and you're still kicking out this wonderful, terrific art. It's good talking with you, Ted. Great, thank you, it's an honor just talking to you, thank you. We're live at AFA for AFA's 2019 December's member show, and I'm here with Matt Cat and his beautiful paintings. So, Matt, uh, are you originally from the Scranton area? Yeah, I grew up in Peckville, Pennsylvania, about 10 minutes from Scranton. I go to Marywood University now, finishing up my senior year. So, yeah, I'm a local. Okay. So, oh, you're you're actively a student right now. Still right now. Yeah. Uh, what are you, what are you taking? Graphic design major philosophy, art history, and illustration minor. Oh, you're a real art head. You're like the real deal. I like torturing myself, you know, with classes every day, all day, you know? Well, um, I love your stuff. I, I just have to say that to start with. It, it's very striking. I, I, I love anything with those, with those thick, bold lines. It, it, it shows strength and, and power for some reason to me. Um, where, where do you draw your inspiration from this? So I called these uh, the faces of reality. So I did a series of six, all that size, different colors, complementary, weird faces, different eyeballs. And I tried to look at reality and how to make light of it and try to do that somehow. So I liked characters. And when I was a kid, I used to draw in my notebook at school. So I did stuff like that, combined it with what I learned over the years and came up with these. and. I did four or five different variations of each one until I got to, to the final product of the, the final six. So this is a, a series of six different pieces? Yeah. And six. here we're looking at green head and blue head. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know that the other pieces aren't on display, but can you kind of uh, tell us about the other four pieces that go to this series? <laughs> yeah, well, essentially they all have their own persona in a way, you know, this guy, you know, they're all, the fun thing is when you see them all in a gallery setting, they're all looking different ways, so they interact with the other ones. The size kind of draws you in, the colors draw you in, and all of them are different colors. So everyone has a different background, and everyone is a different colored face. So the style is what unifies them as a set, but they look completely different. And they're all different characters. I have two girls and four boys, I believe. Well. I'm really, I'm really enjoying these pieces. Uh, like you say, the, the color contrast is so striking. They, they, they command your attention. As soon as you walk into the gallery, like they're, they're so, like big and bigger than life that it, it makes you look at them. And once again, like I say, these bold, these thick, bold black lines are just beautiful to me. I, I, I really love your work, dude. Uh, what, are, what are you working on now? So now I have a, another series I'm doing of similar style dark bold outline paintings uh, i'm doing more figurative things now i have one in the window out front called uh, sad james which is this style in a setting so i'm working on that a lot more um like i said more figurative in a real place more figures involved in the canvas so getting away from the portraits a little but similar style so that's to come soon okay well <clears throat> Unfortunately, I wasn't educated in university as an artist, so I like to talk to people who have a, a deep, real understanding of art and who are, are educated as thoroughly as you are. Uh, so currently, right now, uh, in Miami, there's Art Basel 2019 going on, and someone duct taped a banana to a canvas, and it sold for $120,000. Do you think that's good art or bad art? I think that's clearly bad art. Um, the whole... If you think it's art, it is art, it's kind of getting a little too far, you know, conceptual art where the concept matters more than the impact it has on its own. So, yeah, I don't think a banana taped to the wall is, is valid to say that's art or good art at the very least. I mean, you saw that 
come with Duchamp, with the, the, his toilet, the fountain. You see that come with maybe like even Jackson Pollock with splattering paint. But even they are a lot better to look at than a banana taped to the wall. So I don't know where we're going to go with it. I mean, maybe eventually this wine glass would sell for $18 million or $100 million if we say it's art. You know? So. Well, it's great talking to you, Matt. I love your stuff, and I can't wait to see something else from you. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Hi, we're still live at AFA's 2019 member show for December, and I'm talking with one of my favorite artists, Joe Tluck. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Good to hear that. That was very nice of you to say that, but too kind. The check will be in the mail later on. So, um, Joe, how long have you been a member of the AFA Gallery? I've been here about 10 years, actually, and uh, it's because of the AFA Gallery that I learned a lot. I'm a member of the Hanging Committee, so I'm actually one of the people who put these pieces on the wall. And when I put them on the wall, I look and see firsthand. I hold them in my hand, I look at the back of them, and I stretch the wires, and I feel, I see firsthand what's involved in making that painting. And in so doing, I learn an awful lot from that. And so, 10 years I've been doing that, and the experience and the education has been very, very valuable to me. And here's what it's resulted in. That's amazing that, that you can learn from other artists just by, uh, like I say, being a part of here and, and showing everybody else's art and helping to hang other people's art. And that's, that's kind of how I learned too, uh, is by taking great care to, to pay attention to the details that you put in your stuff. Right. Well, it's actually learning, but it's also stealing from them, too, you know. It's borrowing their ideas, whatever they do, the little nuances that they put in their paintings, the little gadgets that they may use to hang their paintings, how they frame it and all that stuff. That's very, very valuable to me. I've never had any formal art training in a sense, so every time I come here, it's like an education in that sense. Exactly, exactly. I feel the same way. So, um... I really want to delve into some of the newer art that you have here. So uh, the member show, you're able to submit up to three pieces, and, and you have three pieces here. Uh, and this first piece is titled Copper Coke. Um, so these are Coke bottles that I got at an at a antique store. They're old Coke bottles. And I laid them down, and I put a flashlight as a light source along the bottom here. And so that cast a different kind of light across the whole top of the pieces like that there. And then I dumped it into a program called Prisma, and that allowed me to see it in a different light. And so when I did that, I just started to draw it and sketch it, and there it is. Well, it's, it's, it's very, very eye-catching. Um, I've been a big fan of your art for uh, several years now, and I see that you're, even now, after all the experience and after all the art that you've created and produced over the years, you're still tweaking your style and trying different things and experimenting with, with different imagery. You can never be afraid to learn. And the more you learn, the better you, the more you find out about yourself, you know? And I'm not the kind of guy who likes to do the same thing over and over and over again. Other artists do, and that's their forte. I get bored very easily. I'm ADD, and so when I read a book, I want to go to the last three pages in the book and get to find out what the story is. And so when I do a painting or I do a series of paintings, I'll do two, three, the same, but then I'll change and do something completely different. So that's the nature of the game. I like it, I like it. Uh, this second piece, now this is, this, I'm sorry, this is more of your traditional style. This is what most people are, are, are you're known for, is, is this type of really high detail, almost photorealistic uh, type drawings. This is called Finest in the Field. I was an old baseball player. I still am a baseball player. I just don't play anymore. And this is my glove. And I lay them on a um, uh, tile floor. And the sunlight, especially in the winter months, is low level. And it creates a narrow beam of light coming into my, into my room like that. So it was a perfect atmosphere for uh, highlighting this, highlighting these balls, highlighting the glove and laying it in there like that. So it was a very interesting combination. Artistically, it looked just very, very nice, and I was very comfortable to do that. So you said this is your actual glove, your own personal glove that you play ball with. Yeah, I'm, I'm left-handed, and so this is my glove here. How long have you had this glove? This is about 30 years old, this glove. <laughs> that, 
my wife bought that for me on our first date. So she was, knew how she knew the how to get to my heart through baseball. That's pretty good. That's a good story. Uh, and this last piece, once again, is uh, a little different from what people are are used to seeing from you. But the colors are beautiful. The how long the shadow falls. It's just a really, really interesting piece. Uh, what what got you to this right here? Well, this was taken by, uh, we were down, my daughter works in Baltimore, and so we were in the Whole Foods market outside of Baltimore, and the sun was, as we came out of the door, the sun was in our face, and so was his bike in the bike rack, and so I took a photo of it. And the most interesting part about this was not the bike, but the shadow, and the shadow in there. So I played around with the colors, and I just liked how... It worked. Like they all seem to come together, and I put the blotchiness in there like that, and it's called a red bike. It's it's beautiful, really beautiful. Uh, I get a lot of inspiration from you. I personally, I try to uh, focus on light and shadow and the way light falls, and and the way that you can capture that is is really inspirational. And I and I try to get it as good as you are. Maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> well, I, actually, there's a lot of artificial means that I use. For instance, sometimes I'll use a flashlight, like on the Copper Coke, to create an artificial source of light. And then I'll also take my iPhone camera and I'll look and see which way the light is going and, with the, and I'm seeing it through the lens of the camera and I'm able to see, do I like that particular viewpoint that I see? So it's a lot of trial and error. And as I'm, as I'm moving the light, moving the camera, I'm taking pictures and then editing them and changing them around and you know, what appeals to me is what I usually paint, so. Well, I'm always excited to see some of your new art, and it's always great talking to you. Thank you very much, Travis. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. I'm Travis Prince, the host of Electric City's Roundtable Discussions, and we're live at AFA's 2019 December's member show, and I'm here speaking with Christopher Tufano. Tufano. Yeah. It's nice to meet you for the first time, guy. Too. Thank you. Are you a local uh, resident here? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm newer to like the art screen and the art scene in Scranton, but yes, I'm, I'm local. Okay. So, um, so if you're new to the art scene around here, how long have you been a member of the Alpha Gallery? Uh, four months. That's so you're you're just a yeah. brand new member. So this is your first membership. Yeah, it is. Okay. So that's interesting. Uh, a lot of people are starting to. Uh, we're, well, AFA is starting to get a lot of new members this year. I've probably met about six or seven new members myself and uh, a lot of other members that I haven't met. So I'm seeing a lot of new art and a lot of new styles that are, are really cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about your piece right here. Um, you know, in college, you know, we were taught like, you know, uh, theories of color and like how it applies to like real life. And through experimentation, it's got me to my current theme right now. Whereas in like embrace the coloring, you know, there's no solid black paint, for an example, and some rich purples. So like, I really was just trying to like, hey, how can you capture this within like skin tones and like, you know, the figure and the human body. So like, how can you capture that? So uh, figurative painting, is that is that something that you've been working on for a while or is it something that you're just getting into? Y yeah, yeah, I actually have been working on, um, I'm still perfecting it. You know, I have a lot to learn as an artist and as a person. But uh, yeah, it's still work in progress. But this is what I have to show for now. So you you say you went to school for art. How how long have you been actually creating art? Oh boy, um, <laughs> uh, probably like s 25 years when I was like s five. <laughs> yeah, and I, I noticed that a lot too. Um, one of my favorite sayings is, "Everybody, all humans are artists from birth." Uh, Everybody likes to scribble and likes to draw, yeah. and sometimes we grow away from it, but the people who don't go away from it become artists. Um, so this is your, your first member show, your, and this piece right here is entitled Embrace. Um, did you have a, a reference photo or a model, or is this something that you came up with out of your imagination? Um, a little of both, actually. I, I, you know, I had a, um, done modeling in college. I found inspiration. And I totally flipped it on its side, and this is what I created. Okay, so um, what are what are you working on now? Uh, similar projects in this same vein, or is it something completely different from this right here? The color theory is still going to stay the same, but the the material could change. 
Um, my next would be like a still life. If you're out on a boat, or if you're uh, on a ship, like a collaboration of diff just different types of stuff so people can have an idea of what everything would look like in that aspect. Well, that's, that's interesting. Not, um, not sticking with the same imagery but still with the with the same format to produce different yeah exactly to produce different images that's I, I i like that um thank you so what what um what what do you have coming up next are you are you currently working on some new pieces yes yes i am um on my social medias and stuff uh you, you can follow me at uh Tufano arts uh instagram facebook i'm posting stuff so yeah it's cool man well i really appreciate you uh First and foremost, joining AFA and having the courage to, to share all of your art with everybody here in the local community. Your stuff is really vibrant, it's exciting, uh, and it's very tasteful. It's good talking to you, Chris. You. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Hi, we're still live at AFA for the 2019 member show for December, and I'm speaking with Alvin Nurse. How's it going? Good, good. Wonderful evening. So, uh, the main question I, I, I've been asking everybody this evening is, is how long have you been a member of AFTA and how many member shows have you participated in? I've been a member of AFTA for at least six years and I've been in about four or five member shows. Okay. Um, well, I have to say your art is very, very eye-catching, uh, and there's tons of movement and, and motion in it. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I have seen your work before and just didn't realize that it, it was your work. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all about the drama of the page, you know. I start out with one mark, and that leads to another mark, and then on and on and on until it's completed. So these are, uh, are digital prints, is that how you produce these? Yeah, I work exclusively on the computer. Okay, um, and so the title of the top piece is? A watermelon Summer. Watermelon Summer, and I can see the, the ellipse, the green, it's kind of shaped like a watermelon almost, I can see that now from the title. Uh, you want to break down uh, the, the concept and theme of this piece a little bit? Well, actually, I didn't start out trying to make a watermelon. It, end, it just ended up that way. So, uh, you know, it just, it just gave me the feel of, like, summertime and uh, clouds and sort of steamy. And, uh, you know, those strokes are just arm strokes, you know, that I make on, on the uh, drawing pad. Well, I like it. I like it. It's, it's very intriguing. And... I'm from the deep south, from South Carolina, so there's been many a summer times where me and my cousins would sit out and devour several watermelons at a time. Uh, and the second piece here, the, the pinks and the blues are really, really eye-catching. Uh, what's the title of this piece? As Busy as a Bee. Oh. And, uh, I, I tend to do work that's busy, that's active. That, that turns me on. So with this, you've got all kinds of stuff going on. Yes, there's several different strokes here, very broad strokes, uh, a lot of thin lines, a lot of color contrast. Um, I'm really liking the bubbly, wet effect in the back. It's, uh, it's so much and so dynamic. Yeah, I try to, you know, basically art to me is line, texture, and shape. So I try to incorporate all, all three of these things in the, in the drama of the piece. You know, it's not a picture of anything, it is the thing, you know, and that's, that's, that's partly, partly what I'm trying to do. Well, I, I love your stuff, man. It's, 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 like I said, it's very eye-catching, it's, it's very interesting to say the least. Uh, are you currently working on any new projects? Yes, I, I, I work daily. Uh, you know, I get up, eat, wash my clothes, whatever, and then I get on the computer. So every day is a different... It's a different piece. I usually take takes me about uh, three hours to do a piece. Wow! So, so you have you, you put yourself on a on a set schedule as as far as producing your artwork. Yes, the schedule is very important, especially when you're retired like me. Without a schedule, the Sundays turn into Saturdays, and the Saturdays turn into Mondays. So, I work Monday through Friday, and uh, I try to I try to get a piece done each day. 
Yeah, I, I have a lot of people ask me the same questions on how how to stay consistent and making a schedule is is the easiest way. And just sometimes you, you you're excited to do it, and sometimes you're not in such a mood to do it. But if you keep your schedule and work on your schedule, you, you'll always be creating new art. Yeah, yeah, I I, I try to do it constantly because I've even if I miss a day, I can feel the difference. You know, so every day I got to get with it. Yeah, that's a real artist when you get that artist itch, knowing that you didn't produce something in a, in a day or so. So um, I'm really happy you're here. Uh, great work in the member show and hope to talk to you again. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, still here at AFA's 2019 December's member show and I am speaking with Mark Rooney. How's it going, Mark? I'm doing great. Uh, so we have two pieces that you've uh, have entered into the member show. Um, can you tell us the title of, of this first piece? This piece is called Aphrodite. Oh, uh, Aphrodite, the goddess of love. The goddess of love, that's right, yes. And it's basically, if, you, if I can just elaborate a little, it's abstract expressionism meets realism. So, and this is, you know, a little foray into Greek culture here, but I kind of free associate the dog I, I added myself. These are traditional symbols of, of Aphrodite. Um, the, the first thing that I can see is uh, you have used several different mediums on this piece and it, it gives it a very highly textured look that is, that is just so appealing to me. Um, can you tell me some of, some of the uh, different uh, mediums that you uh, apply to the canvas? Uh, sure. I start with a paper ground. So the ground is paper. That's my abstract expressionist side, so I kind of splash and drip and smear, etc. Then I mount that on wood, and that's mainly acrylic, but kind of mixed media. There's some pastel, other things in there, and acrylic. Uh, then the figurative parts I paint in oil on top of the paper ground. Very, very interesting. Um, a lot of artists are fearful of uh, blending so many different types of materials together in, in a, co a very cohesive way, but you've, you've managed to, to pull this thing off and it, it looks very, very nice. I'm, I'm very, very impressed by this piece. Hear you say that. I've been painting for 40 years. I consider myself an abstract expressionist. That's where my heart really lies. I'm also a, a, a college professor, though, so I teach art. And so I teach them how to paint and draw realistically. So the past couple of years, I've been combining the two things, the realism with the abstract expressionism. Yeah, uh, the same is, goes with me and my art. Um, some things get a little stale after a while, and you just have to add something to it or mix it up a little bit to, to keep the, the flair and the fun in it. Uh, so let's, let's talk about your second piece here. Uh, this is a portrait of Camille Claudel. Camille Claudel was a sculptor in Paris in the 19th century. She's famous for her own work. This is one of my reproduction of one of her sculptures. She's also famous for being the mistress and assistant of Rodin. Uh, but her story doesn't stop there. She developed some kind of mental illness, and this is late 19th century Paris. Today, we'd, she'd probably be diagnosed as bipolar or something like that, but my point is, in those days, mental illness was another story, so she was involuntarily committed to a mental institution for the last 30 years of her life. She died in like 1940-something in a mental institution. Some people blame Rodin for that. Some people blame her brother, who was a famous diplomat in Paris at the time. So who really knows? But she, very interesting story. And I kind of tried to capture her, that look, sort of a little girl lost kind of look in a way. But again, she's a very distinguished sculptor in her own right. And then the rest of the things, I free associate sort of an ecological statement. I free associate nature, a lot of birds, flowers, other kinds of animals, and, and once again, I'm, it's sort of incongruous, but I try and put all of this together into a unified story, essentially. Well, you've done an amazing job. Uh, the, the, the main subject, her name once again? Camille Claudel. Camille Claudel. Well, you've just uh, educated me on a, a sculptor from 19th century, uh, 1900 France. Um, Seems like she had a really amazing uh, a story. story. Yeah, yeah. A um, feminist story. She's a very good artist. I, I, when next time I go to Paris, I've been there a few times. I've seen a lot of Rodin's work. I haven't seen much of hers, but she's pretty successful. So if you go to Paris, I don't know if there's any in the United States, but you can see some of her sculptures like this one in Paris. So next time, I'm definitely going to look for it because she's kind of a neglected artist, unfortunately. 
but very talented, as you can tell, even from my sort of crude rendering of her marble sculpture there. I'm, once again, I'm, I'm really intrigued by uh, the paper and, and how you layer and how you, how you start the piece and how it finishes out. And, and even the frame looks rustic, but it, it fits so well with this piece. I'm very, very impressed. I obviously build the frames myself, but I try and incorporate them into the work. So sometimes I even paint the inside. This I kind of thought of as like marble or something, you know, sculpture droppings or what have you. So I sort of customize the frames to the work so that it all fits together somehow. And how long have you been a member of AFA? Uh, well, this is my second membership. I had a show here about five years ago. I live in Hazleton. I'm from Washington, D.C., more or less. I lived there for 25 years. But So I was a member here about five years ago, and then I rejoined in the summer. So this is my second membership, but uh, about a year or so. Yeah. Well, less than a year. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you came back and, uh, and you pres uh, displayed some artwork in here. Uh, I'm really not sure if I've seen your, your stuff before, but... I'm happy that I have a chance to see it now, and I really look forward to seeing more of your work. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that, and hopefully you will see more of my work. And this is a great gallery. I love it. So I'll be back here for sure, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, we're still here at AFA's uh, 2019 December's member show, and I'm speaking with Judy Yushet. Hi. So um, this is the piece that won for Best of Show for uh, this, this show, and this is by Bill Pillings. Okay, and and you are uh, part of the foundation that gives out the award for this? No, actually, I've been with AFA from the very beginning. Uh, I was president for a while, 30 years ago. And uh, so we've been doing this every year. It's our main major fundraiser. And so we always pick out a best in show. And so these are all the members of AFA that contribute to, to this once a year uh, experience and uh, so, so it was my pri pri privilege this year to pick the piece for my son's uh, award. Oh, so you actually picked the winning piece this year, and it, it, it took a while because there are some beautiful paintings here, and it took me quite a while. It was difficult, but this one really spoke to me, and so I decided. To well, it is it is very intriguing, um, and I like it. The uh, the box is always allow that three-dimensional effect in there and this there's a, so much going on in this very small space I can see why why you chose this piece it's very imaginative yes and it tells a story and the artist was explaining some of it to me when he was here how we put it together and you can just see the energy you know s surging in him as he explained it it's beautiful it just touches your heart well I really appreciate uh, everything that you've done for AFA over the years and selecting this piece right here and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Very nice. Mm -hmm.